Ransomware victims are paying up, but then the gangs are coming back for more. Colonial Pipeline paid 5 million ransom to hackers. Um, basically, to get their crap back. And then, ransomware victims pay cyber criminals to save family photos. This particular Niedermeyer family paid $800 ransom to get precious family photos of their three young boys back. Um, this is basically a thing that I've seen here at the shop several times. It's called a crypto virus that you have to pay to get your stuff back because of the way it's designed. It uh, encrypts your files, deletes the originals, and then puts the modified or copied files back in their place. And anytime you want to look at any of these, it will not let you. It will lead you to a website or a pop-up saying you have to pay in Bitcoin. I mean, there's really no really real way of ensuring you'll get your stuff back. But they sure will get money in Bitcoin from you. Okay, so that's one way. I haven't seen a crypto virus in years, but I have seen a lot of other ways. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how it's done, basically in real time. So, in my business, I have gone over this time and time again. Microsoft, I mean, they're not a bad company, but their security... It, sucks. Now, I'll show you what's up with this. Okay, so you've got lots of different services, mail, cloud stuff. Um, I'm just going to go over a couple of them real quick to start this out. Uh, top of the rules is got to be iCloud. So, iCloud. iCloud iCloud is the best. So I've had people, let's say, come in with a MacBook and their MacBook's dead. They bring me their new MacBook and I go to set up their MacBook and when the information is put into the new computer, it immediately has to contact another Apple device owned by the same customer in order to authorize the login and therefore the uh, syncing of the device. And that goes with MacBook, iMac, um, iPhone, all of it. So that's good. Uh, it's called two-factor authentication. That's the method they use. Number two is Google. Google is by far, as far as all-around services, Google is by far the best. Um, I've had people literally in the same room with the same uh, network with two different devices and they can't log, log, log into the second one using their own information because the security is that tight. Um, basically, they have to get like an authentication text or something like that. Um, so... Google uses two-factor authentication as well as geolocation, geolocation, um, to help d determine if that's a um, authorized sign-in. Um, next is your free services, you know, like Yahoo. Um, I don't know what people are using anymore. Uh, Yahoo, other because Gmail is everything. Um, Yahoo, Hotmail, you know live.com there's like outlook.com there's live.com hotmail.com all owned by microsoft and that is the entire premise here and why would i make a video 
about this if 90% of people are using Google and iCloud? Well, the reason is, is because every single time you buy a computer, and I think the market share has got to be something like 90% of computers are Microsoft machines, in other words, Windows machines, probably mostly because of availability, um, the amount of companies making them, and above all, cost. So, that's why I'm making this video, so let's get into it. Okay, so getting into this, um, I have been wanting to make a video on this subject for some time because of the fact that I see this on a daily basis, people getting uh, losing their stuff, uh, people having no access to um, their own data because they got that one random phone call from Microsoft or Amazon or any of these things uh, about somebody saying that, oh, you are, your account is in trouble and it's sending out viruses. And unfortunately, um, some of the best people I know are Indian. And unfortunately, India is the kind of the, the black mark is their call centers based over there, giving that wonderful country a bad name. But uh, at any rate, these people will have regular names, John Smith. Basically, they make, they make up names that are uh, Google-proof. You Google John Smith, Microsoft, and you know you're not going to get anywhere. However, if their name was Mike Wazowski, Smith the third, you might you know, get somewhere. At any rate, they used very generic American sounding names and they get on your computer. Once they're on your computer, literally in a matter of a millisecond, they can execute a batch script. What that is, it changes port settings, it, it installs backdoors, it basically uh, leeches data or passwords. I mean, that's, that's a whole tangent I don't really want to go into. But the point is, is that they get your password and uh, they sell it on the black market, on the dark web. Uh, and, you know, down the road, then you end up one day waking up and your entire computer is empty. And there might be a text message, I'm sorry, a text file on your desktop saying, if you want your stuff back, read this. It's a real thing. I've seen it many times. And the fact of how easy it is to do and the lack of secondary authentication from Microsoft, uh, it's astounding. And I'm going to show you. A couple days ago, I called a good buddy of mine back in California where I'm from and I asked him to create on a device in California, a Microsoft account. Um, he sent me the login for it. It's just an empty account. He sent me the login for it and even the date of birth he chose and the security questions, uh, which is funny because nowhere in this process was I asked for any of this to enter this account. Anyway, we'll get into it. Okay, so we're now at the point after what's called a clean install of Windows 10 Home Edition, which is overwhelmingly the one that's used on store sold computers uh, of this era. And same with Windows 11 now. Um, Windows 10 Home forces you to take a Microsoft account or to create an account to use their computer. There are ways around this, which I will show you in the next video but for purposes of this let's see if we can log in with the Microsoft account that my friend created a few days ago literally on the West Coast 2,500 miles away so let's see what happens All right, 
let's see what happens here. Wants the password. All right, let's see what happens here. Let's see if it accepts it. Oh, let's try again. Okay, I entered it, and right here, it seems like it's going forward. So it says that uh, passwords can be forgotten or stolen, and just in case, add security info now to help you get back into your account if something goes wrong. We won't use this to spam you just to keep your account more secure. I wonder if there's a way around this. And then we look down right here. It says skip for now. And in parentheses, seven days until this is required. So not only do they require you to divulge your email account, but they also require you for a second one or a second way to contact you. We're going to hit skip because this is not really needed for this demonstration. All right. So. Want to set up a pin? <laughs> yeah, we'll create a pin. Sure, why not? <clears throat> Let's do uh, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Okay, so we're going to cut it here, and once we're in Windows, we will show you the rest. Hey, look, a nice, fancy new Windows 10 install. Okay, so we are now on Windows. Sorry for the view and it's kind of hard to see, but I'll explain everything. So, looking down here, there's the OneDrive icon. Uh, it says OneDrive is updating. So, OneDrive is like Dropbox or the Cloud or Google Drive. It's basically the built-in system to put all your stuff in the cloud. Uh, one thing of note is that if you go to your user folder on this computer, you, uh, you don't see anything in OneDrive that sticks out, but it's there. And I should also mention that I've never used a Microsoft account on a computer ever, uh, personally. So it was kind of interesting that when I just did this a minute ago and uh, set it up, that it asked me to buy or tried to set me up with Xbox Game Pass, um, four or five different things it wanted me to buy or register for or, here, take this. Microsoft, Microsoft, Microsoft. They literally tried to pimp themselves out in a big way. Okay, so let's just figure out where we're at. As I mentioned before, a friend of mine created an account in California three or four days ago. They sent me the password. They sent me the email. Uh, and they sent me security question answers, which is interesting, except for the fact that I didn't need any of them. I'm sitting here 2,500 miles away on a new computer. In other words, by new I mean one that hasn't been used before. And then just put the password in, and now I'm in their account. So, for instance, if I go to uh, OneDrive, let's say I had this person's um, information and they had it set up a year ago and they're currently using it on another computer, and they had all their documents and their resume and photos and things on there. By clicking OneDrive, open folder, there's everything. Um, there's nothing in this account, of course, but if I click on this OneDrive, let's see what happens here. I think if I just go to the OneDrive online hey look Microsoft Edge alright so what's interesting is um, 
if this went the way I'm assuming it did, all I need to do is go to Outlook.com, and there's several different, you know, Hotmail, Outlook. There's several ways to the same destination with Microsoft. Now, I'm going to say sign in and see what happens. Interesting, right? I didn't put anything in. It's already in. It's already in the email and everything. Look at that. Junk email. Inbox. That's the person's email in California. Here it is. Of course, that's only email because they used Hotmail. If you were to use Google or something like that, that would be a little bit different. Uh, but anyway, the important thing is this. You click here and you click on OneDrive. OneDrive is the user folders from this computer right now. Let's get you started. So I'm going to hit start next. Let's get started. This is what would have been done, you know, whenever this account was set up. So let's see here. All right. So let me let me give it a minute to set everything up on Microsoft's end and I'll be right back. Okay, so just now I created a folder on the desktop called desktop stuff and a document, just a blank text document. And there they are in the cloud, in the OneDrive in the cloud. So there's that. Um, so I'm gonna try something here. I am going to shut down this computer completely. Now, let me show you here. Um, in the OneDrive folder on this computer, there it is, desktop stuff, new text document. Um, it's on this computer itself. So I'm going to shut this down. Now let's say, let's say this computer is in California. Let's just pretend. Okay, and meanwhile, 2,500 miles away. Okay, so I have to explain what just went down off camera because the the way I have my camera set up, you know, this is a, a new batch of equipment. I'm still learning it, but it would not let it would not allow me to record the same feed that I am viewing. So anyway, let me tell you what I just did. I just opened up on a completely separate computer opened up the web version of Outlook.com and logged in with the same information that I created or that was created in California for this Microsoft account. And this computer that lives in California, I created a couple of folders and they were in OneDrive as previously shown. So when I logged in via the other computer to the Microsoft account, it let me write in. Um, Microsoft asks for, you know, security questions and, you know, birthday, things like this. Didn't ask for a damn thing to log in. Even though, theoretically, this was in a completely different part of the world. So, I logged in, clicked on OneDrive, and lo and behold, there were the folders and files that I created on this computer in California. So I clicked on them and clicked delete. And then I clicked on the recycle bin within the Microsoft account we're talking about and deleted them there too. So think about this, a hacker, just from clicking something on Facebook or putting your password in where, you know, is not to be trusted somebody got into your account they save everything of yours they delete everything yours of yours from your account and then they send you an email saying that uh hey man pay me some bitcoin and i'll put your stuff back so let's see there's nothing on my desktop here let me go into a folder on this computer 
let's say this guy wakes up in California, goes to his computer, opens it up, and look at this, completely empty. That's how easy it is to completely burn somebody's business life or personal life to the ground because of a Microsoft account and because of the security. Absolutely terrible. Anyways, so now that this has been demonstrated, I am going to make another video on exactly how to get completely around this and not use Microsoft account to completely cloud your whole computer. You can still use OneDrive, just like you can use Dropbox or Google Drive, and just put certain things in there for safekeeping. In other words, use a local account on the computer and then hook up OneDrive and put some things in there for safekeeping in case your computer, you know, dies or your hard drive goes south. Then you could get a new computer, log into OneDrive, and there's all your files that you wanted to have safe. But you shouldn't have it linked there. So anyway, look for the second video coming up in just a few minutes, and uh, it will explain how to get around all of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do another install of Windows 10 on this machine, and then show you exactly how to get around having to use a Microsoft account. And this does work for Windows 10 Home and Professional as well as Windows 11 Home and Professional. So we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.